Right, so I'm just going to mix up a dark colour for my evergreen trees. I'm going to use black, blue, crimson, maybe a bit of the brown, the dark sienna with that as well. Good dark colour basically. These evergreens are really are dark. Usually are. You tend to find most of the time that they are just dark, very dark in tone. Now, just where this lake is, I know we've got one at the side, just there. So I'm just going to mark out where I want all these trees to be. So just pull down sometimes, give them a little trunk at the base. Sometimes it helps you if you do this. Just show you this little way of doing it. Just tap all the way down with it. Now I want one to come just up into this slightly, like so. That's going to go right through that building. And then there's a lot of rocks and stuff as well in there. Comes right. We've got another one there that goes right through it. And then we've got a higher one. Just about there. Great stuff. Now, now when you're doing this, it's important to load it to a proper chiseled edge. Really sharp because now I'm just going to come up in here and I'm just going to indicate some little bits of detail on some of these trees when you're going over that white bit I wipe it off on a towel reload and then do it again and it will work you turn it over get a fresh load Brilliant. some like boulders and rocks and all sorts of stuff going on in there so I'm just going to make it dark for now maybe there's another tree just there Lock that completely so it looks like that little cabin is right behind all of this you see that's how small it was you could only just see it there we go. I know that that's going to be quite blocked in just in there same under that. That's on the opposite side you see of the slope of the snow. Right so now again reload and I just want to come in here and do this evergreen. using a tiny little edge of the brush these are very skinny trees Patrick's actually got a friend who's out there at the moment, out here, the Crater Lakes. Lucky person, eh? Very lucky. I 
don't love that. She was in either corner all the time. Opposite corners. Loads of little limbs just hanging out there. That's good. Now there's some rocks just in here which come up to about there. And then tree like blocks them off so it's blocking behind that. Just in there. And then there's actually a rock that comes through this side of it. So it's going behind it there and it comes down and drops down to about there. And there's another little boulder just there. Well, all I'm doing is planning it out in my mind as I go, basically. Really simply. I'm simplifying it as much as possible when I'm doing it, especially in my mind. snow showing in between them trees from that and again I can put a little bit of something on this one good and dark in there leave a few areas with that shadow colouring because we've got some actual snow up here as well. I need some boulders just where that building is. And make that look like a little bush or something that's just sat in there. They really are high up though here. They are really high. Now I know that over in here we've got a tree that comes right up in the sky. That's your bravery test for you. And it'll come right through. It's quite a skinny tree. Throw a bit of the trunk now and again through it. Work my way down the tree. Brush loading is very important on this. If you're struggling to get your paint to apply properly, just push into it slightly and you'll get a little ridge on your brush just like you've got on the palette there. And that will really make the job a lot easier for you. This one's going to block off the edge of that. Chisel edge again. And then just in there, paint this tree in front. 
where the cabin is. Great. Now I know that we've got some boulders and rocks. Maybe get a bit of that brown that I used before. There. Another one there, another big boulder. Loads of them in here. And then I'll paint in between them with snow. In between these big rocks. Working its way down gravity is helping it to get down this hill slowly but surely over time. So up in here we've got a few of them rocks and boulders. Now I want this to have some in there. Now one thing I do want to do, I just want to use my brush with the white on. And just in here, I'm going to put some snow just up in there. Just in that little area. And then get a load of white, both sides of the fan brush. And then I'm going to come up in front of this and bring it through. See? So you've got a little snow drift just in there. Allow them shadows. Need to kill them shadows. Don't want you to kill them at all. Right, so I'll use the knife in these tight areas. I know that I want to come up in front, put some snow in there. Sometimes you can just touch it, and see that it gives you a little shadow. So in there, touch it, pull it down. Gives you a little shadow for the rock where it's just disappearing off. Right. Use some of this titanium white down in there here. Into the shadowed areas. And I want to create a bit of some stuff going on in there. Just running the brush over gently. See over here, I'm seeing we've got some sort of a drift going on. Yeah, so leave that shadow behind. Put this little snow drift in that's going to follow its way on down there. I just picked a bit of the dark up then. Tap it out on a towel when that happens and you can just disappear into the snow. And you don't want dirty snow, that's for sure. Blend behind that. Yeah, that's good. Now, even up into the sh shadow, up in here, I want to actually have a few bits of stuff going on. So I'm just going to use a bit of white and allow it to blend into there. Just little bits here and there. Quite intermediate though, just random. Just stops it all being one flat colour in there, you see. Right. Now, palette knife. Again, with the white on. And then just over in here, I'm going to use this. Put some snow in between where the rocks are. Clean off the knife and then you can go back to that colour and just flatten it down slightly. See how flat I actually have to hold the knife.
bits of snow all over the place. A few little bits just on this rock. snow basically on there. With the pallet eye. There we go. Now that just down in here. Just about here we've got something just showing down there in the vein of a bit of cliff or something, I'm not sure. There's uh, something just going on. And then that same colour, brown with the black and the blue. And put across. And just here and there, I want to actually just put a few little boulders in. There, there's one. Have a clean knife and you can actually sculpt the knife to these little stones. Some are bigger, some are smaller. Got ones in between. As you're running out of colour, I just run into these other little areas and indicate stuff going on. rocks that are just showing through snow. You notice I'm following the angles of the slope while I'm doing this. delicate things in the night. It's great. And also what I want to do is I just want to get some of them shadow colours. And I'll do the same thing. One thing I want to do where this rock is here, I just want to put see where that goes under there, I want to put a bit of snow on that. Going in between there. Now I'm just going to use my knife and run it up through this, these trees. There, and I'll give you a nice little indication of a trunk for them. a ball painting this has been great proper enjoyed it somewhat different nice now just here and there I want to use the fan brush with the white on and I'm going to give it a shadow tone with a bit of the blue 
into that as well. So this is the colour you see there. A little bit of blue to it. A bit of the dark colours like the black and all that. I don't want it to be too blue. That's too blue actually. There. Something like that. And then with that, I'm just going to stick the odd little highlight here and there on the trees. But not too much, just a right little bit. There's not a lot of highlight on these at all. Really pretty dark. You're going to see the odd little bit here and there. In the shadows it'll work well. Pick up that dirty colour, tap it away and go back into that colour. Same down in here I can just indicate a few bits of snow just here and then on these. It's really small the amounts that we're doing but it does make a difference it's like for this tree here a few little ones on it'll only just stand out to you but it'll just fit perfectly there see that stands out down there in the shadow there's a bit more snow just there and that Now with that same colour, the dark blue, I just want to come here and there and indicate some little shadowed stuff going on. There's like footprints or whatever in the snow. Maybe a little goat's been down here and trekked down to water's edge or something like that. I'm not even sure if they have goats there but I know there'd be plenty of wildlife, probably some bears, a couple of grizzlies or something come down here with the little babies down this steep slope same again just tiny little ones as well as, as well as the bigger ones there's these little marks in the snow you see everywhere back have a look there. sometimes nice you just touch some of these with the brown you can just put some here and there Right then, just down in here, I'm going to put a little tree that I've, I've got just behind this. So, start off there, reload your brush, and then just a little evergreen tree it's going to be. Very careful at the top of your evergreen, and then as you come down it will just get fatter and fatter, constantly. I like to guide myself sometimes by doing that. And then I'll reload. And I can just do some individual limbs then. Like I said, these trees are very dark.
the little branches coming out to it. Again, use the knife, run the knife up through to the top. Leave your little trunk in there. Go back to the fan brush with the light blue on it. I'll just indicate a few little highlights. Snow on there, just the tiniest amount. This is the painting finished. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've all had a really good time. Take care, y'all.